Hey guys, today I've got this Hogan HMD904 magnetic drill that isn't working. So I'm going to go over some of the things I checked to see if I can repair it. I'll also do a little maintenance on it while we're at it. So let's get started. So normally when I'm doing a power tool repair, the first thing I look at is the power cord. And as you can see, this one is in pretty bad shape. For tools with brushes, the easiest way to do this is to pull out the brushes and check for continuity between the plug terminals and the brush holders. I also like this method because you can inspect the brushes at the same time and rule those out as the cause of the malfunction. Next I remove the four screws on the front to remove the control board. Now one of the most common issues I come across with these drills is the upper power cord from the base of the drill motor gets damaged. These drills are heavy and the cord is exposed to being pulled or bumped while being moved around. So I'm actually going to test this wire first. To check this cord I unplug the connectors for white and black wires coming from the circuit board and leading up through the handle to the top of the drill. With my multimeter set to resistance, I look for continuity between the terminal and the brush holders. Here we can tell from the beeping sound that the black wire tests good, but the white wire does not. This means there's a break in the wire somewhere and we're going to have to replace this section of the power cord. To do this we need to access the other end of the cord inside the drill motor. So I temporarily put the circuit board back in with one screw just to be sure nothing accidentally gets unplugged while I move the drill around. Then I remove the small access cover from the front of the drill, then remove four screws that hold the motor in place. I gently pull the motor off, then carefully pull the armature out. Next I remove the two screws that hold the stator in and remove the fan shroud. Before removing the stator, I loosen the strain relief to free up the power cord, then I can slowly work the stator out of the motor casing. With the stator out, I then recheck the white wire between the terminal and the case, and the connection to the stator. With it still testing bad, I cut the connectors off the stator and pull out the old power cord. I strip back a new piece of cord and insert it through the handle to the case and retighten the strain relief. I then need to pass the other end of the cord through the small hole and reconnect it to the stator by trimming and stripping the ends of the leads and splicing the wires using new insulated connectors. Finally I check the new connections by testing between each of the wires and the stator terminals. With that testing good, I put the stator back into the casing along with the fan shroud, then I put the armature back in. Finally, I tighten the strain relief and put terminals on the wires inside the case. With one last continuity test between the terminals and the brush holders, the cord replacement is complete. 
Now before I put the drill motor back on, it's a good time to pop off the gearbox cover and inspect the gears and grease. I use my screwdriver to move some of the built up grease from the edges of the case and spread it back onto the gears. With the gearbox cover replaced, I put the motor back on and bolt it down. Then I put the access cover back in place and replace the brushes. Now to replace the main power cord, I'm going to start by removing the ground wire from the frame. Then I undo the strain relief from the front of the switch panel. Next I pull the white wire off from the power switch and separate the terminals, then do the same with the black wire. I cut the terminals off the old wires and pull them through the panel. I strip back my new power cable and pass the wires through the panel and tighten the strain relief. Next I put terminals on the wires and connect them to the pairing terminals before connecting the pairs back to the power switch. Then with the ground terminals replaced and grounded to the case, the cord replacement is complete. Now before I put the circuit board back in, we're going to look at a few items I like to check if we are having issues with one of these drills. First I'm going to unplug these two little switch connectors so we have better access to the fuses. There are two of them here which I'm going to pull out and test with our multimeter. These both test good, so I'm going to put them back. Next I'm going to test the start and stop switches by unplugging those two connectors next to the fuses again, inserting my probes and testing the switch. Next, I find the connector with the blue wires and test the magnet safety switch. And we can see that is working fine. One last item I check is the magnetic base coils. There are two electromagnets that hold the drill in place while drilling and they're powered by the two sets of wires consisting of a yellow and a black wire. I unplug these connectors from the board and probe them individually measuring the resistance of the coils. One thing I found a little odd with this drill is that it appears that the ground wires for the coils are connected to the opposite connectors. This has no effect on the performance of the magnets, but it does make it a little bit trickier to test. I connect one of my leads to a yellow wire on one connector and the other to a black wire on the other connector, then check the opposite ones. We see here I'm getting a reading of about 107 ohms on each magnet, which looks to be in the correct range. With all the electrical checks done, I tuck the wires and circuit board back in and screw the panel in place. One last bit of maintenance I'm going to do before putting this drill back into service is to clean and lubricate the slide mechanism. First I loosen the set screws that apply pressure to the brass guide. Then I remove the lower bracket bolts. Then the top limiting block. And lift the drill off the stand. Then I clean the back of the track. And the brass guides. and the slider and gear on the motor. Then the gears get some grease. And the brass guides go back in along with the spacer. Everything gets a good coating of silicone lubricant and we slide the drill back onto the base. We put the stopper back in and tighten the set screws just a little. 
With the handles reinstalled, I adjust the set screws to set the pressure on the slide just enough that the drill can stay up on its own, but take very little effort to slide down. Finally, we bolt the lower bracket back down and we're done. So let's test it out by drilling a 3 quarter inch hole into some half inch plate. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.